they let me be. I got so pissed off. I, would, I, I skated down to Ground Zero, I'm, and I'm checking out the scene, right? And they were still, um, I don't know if they're still doing it. I haven't been down there in a while, but they were still uh, selling the pictures of the towers on fire. Oh, there was some ragheads and stuff selling these. I mean, if you're, I, what a suicidal piece of shit. They, these guys were selling pictures of the towers on fire. Completely on fire. Big 8x10 right. photos here in the city on fire. You know, oh, would you like to buy, what? How are you alive? And, uh, you look at this guy. Like, how is he still alive? And, and I had a moment. I got in a fight with the guy, and he didn't. He didn't even uh, speak English, but he's kind of getting in my face. Like, you know, go figure that in New York it, City. It's <laughs> like he's pretty much like tough shit. What are you gonna do about it? Yeah. That's the that's the feeling I got by how he was like reacted to it. And I t it, it was those cheap little card tables. He had all his displays. I just went for it. Knocked the whole thing off. Tipped all. it over? Wow. Not just tipped it over. I just completely just destroyed the display. I'm just picturing you all pissed off. Get into a fight, uh, slam the table, uh, and then you skate away on your little uh, uh, slow motion <laughs> like a video. Tipping well, the yeah, table can't really over. Like leave Jake angrily Lamana. on skates. I, I didn't skate away. How do you leave my angrily on skates? You're right. How do you leave? Yeah. <laughs> I I showed him. Right. I showed him. It's like hopping on a pogo stick uh, and pogoing yeah. away. Yeah, asshole. Who who did this to you? Oh, that no, guy no. pirouetting over there. <laughs> And don't make me come back here. <laughs> boing, 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 boing. <laughs> cling, cling with the bell. Cling, 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 cling. Yeah, I'm coming back for you. <laughs> Out of my way. Wow. <laughs> Ah, yeah, it's, I, I figured I'd share. But, you know, Tough guy. I, I did my part. <laughs> oh, God. Showed him as oh, he rollerblades away. Off. You're lucky I'm wearing woman's footwear. <laughs> <laughs> Puts both arms behind his back, leans forward, and skates away. <laughs> whoosh, whoosh. Speed skating fashion. <laughs> I showed him. Oh, boy. Boy, did I show him. We got more info on the coins. Uh, Tad from San Francisco. Hey, Tad. So, yeah, Ben was just rocking and rolling. He was enjoying himself. And then, yeah. Your dancing. family was having a good time. Uh, yeah, I, I brought my brother and then Cracked my... open that bottle of rum that was what on the table, animal. didn't they? What kind of an animal? Your brother just reaches over to the table and just opens up the bottle my of rum. My brother works on Wall Street. He is an animal. And he thinks I never that... saw a bucket of Coronas disappear so quickly either. <laughs> yeah, my brother, um, he thinks Ant and I are pussies because he's been doing this lifestyle for like 10 years. He he gets up at 3, 3.30. Ah. And... So he does. Oh and, oh, and I'm sure he was one of the last to go home yesterday. <laughs> How does I he guarantee do it? it. I don't know how he does it. He hasn't slept in months. You know, he just he just likes to rock and roll. And then uh, he, he he invited my cousin out last night. We got to get him on the on the air soon. He's like one of, maniac. He's one of these New York hipsters, man. He knows oh, really? he knows everything about this city. He walked in. I thought it was Moby. <laughs> yeah, I know. I Moby came in. <laughs> you know what I love about New York? I was in the stove. Yeah, it, you just you just take my face and just. Just like shave all my head, you yeah. know, make me bald and put some hip clothes on me. That's what my cousin mm -hmm. looks like. Pretty much it. You yeah. know what's great about New York, though? Oops, cousin shows up. You know, he's got the Moby shaved head. He's got the bright red sports jacket on, and he's got like Converse All Stars and like ripped jeans. Now, only in New York. That's what's yeah. great about New York. That's totally acceptable. Sure. And then those guys picked up chicks in about two uh, seconds. And, and they were gone. See, that's the difference, you know. And, and he was hanging out with his friend Andre, who Andre is like just huge in the whole, uh, you know, uh, spinning uh, scene and all that. He, you know, he spins at all the hot places in the city, you know, and uh, they go in the VIP room. They knew within seconds that there was nothing going on there, so they went to the regular area and picked up girls within, like, minutes. Your cousin? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. These guys are, these guys are, like, real players, man. These guys, these guys don't mess around at all. Damn. Um, I pick up my share of women with some smooth lines and clubs. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you pick up threes. These guys pick up, like, like supermodels. So what? Like it's, it's nothing. So like it's nothing. They all make the same noise when you strangle them. And my, <laughs> and my cousin, he invents all sorts of things. Invents things? Yeah, he invented this uh, contraption <laughs> that uh, you could smoke pot and no one knows you're smoking pot. That is a useful device, sure. And I, I, I can't, I don't want to give it the away. The smokeless pipe or something? No, no. You well, I don't want to give it away, but you blow the smoke through this thing, and it, and it just smell. It doesn't smell like uh, pot smoke anymore. What about the smoke? It's perfect for the dorm rooms. Let's just put it that wow. way. You don't have to put the towels under the door anymore. It's, uh, you know, to make sure the RAs don't catch you smoking pot. What about the smoke coming off the joint or the pot or the or the thing? He's got it all figured out. Maybe we'll ha have him in to and 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 demonstrate his device because mm. this guy loves his pot. <laughs> an infomercial for that on uh, one really? of the late night channels. Really? No. Oh. 
Jesus. I wouldn't be surprised. Can you imagine that? Yeah. Smoke your pot, people. <laughs> Shark bait. Yeah. Wow. And there's a little kid in the cart, and he's doing something bad, and he's being obnoxious. And the the mother yells at him, or gives him a little spank on the ass, and he starts crying. I'll wait till the mother turns around, and I'll look right at the little kid and go and point at him and go ha 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 ha, and he starts crying. It is such a thrill for me to upset children. Wow. Wow. Oh. Huh? I, can't I never get hit with a hand ever. I oh, there was always an implement involved. Oh, always. The, oh, no, we've yeah. I mean, we could do a, a, an hour on this. I used to get uh, uh, spanked with the Hot Wheel tracks. A Hot Wheel track. The uh, that wood, is brutal. Wow. The wooden spoons. Wooden spoons. Wooden spoons. Spoon was a big one. Um, well, the, the legendary story in my family. This is the truth. When we we you know did something wrong and it was time for a beating, my dad would send us out in the yard to bring in a stick so he could hit us with it. And of course, we. You would... really are Opie, aren't you? I know. That sounds like That's... a Sheriff Andy Taylor and thing would, to do. Did you ever tie a little tie all your possessions to the end of the stick and try to run away with a <laughs> little polka dotted and a polka dotted <laughs> hanky on the yeah. end of a stick? I'm a satirist, and my dad was a uh, uh, he was sadistic. Basically, no, he wasn't sadistic. He was a great man, but uh, no, we we would have to come in with the stick that he was gonna you know punch us with. And That's I, great. Obviously, I would come in with a little twig and. Now my parents would start laughing, and then, but then I didn't get oh, my beating. Oh, we all laugh. Yeah, we all laugh, and we'd move on. But I would get the belt. Oh yeah. The belt. I had I had a lot of great fights. Hope he's the only guy that could go on one of these scuba outings in uh, the Bahamas. Was it? Mm. Where was it? It was where we Turks uh, and Caicos. Turks and Caicos. I went back there. Everyone, you know, you do the scuba diving thing. You take the course, and and you, you go scuba diving. They take you out to a reef. Maybe a, how, what's the depth? Thirty feet? No, 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 no. Fifty. They, they take you t technically because you know I'm not certified. They take you down like sixty or seventy feet. Oh, sixty, but seventy we, feet. We definitely went down a lot further than that. And, and you know, most of the people go to these things. They have wonderful story. Maybe take the underwater camera, get a little fish uh, photography. And Opie gets in a fight underwater with a guy underwater. How do you fight <laughs> underwater? It's a true story. It's like it's, James Bond with the one knife the... in his mouth trying to cut the guy's air hose. Well, what happened, I was kind of experienced as far as these dives because I was there for a couple weeks. So it was like my, I don't know, probably close to my 10th dive. I was still in the men of the Calypso started brawling. Right. I was doing like two dives a day. I was really into it. and But every time you went out to, to, to go for the dive, there was like... Quote newbies. I, I know I'm not, you know, but I, I had a few dives under my belt. Newbies. So. Like Hope's going down to the Titanic to pick <laughs> yeah, up some wreckage. I know, I know. <laughs> newbies. Newbies. And, and they got the day before you were in the pool at uh, the resort oh, learning yeah. how to breathe through the regulator. Absolutely. You're 100% right. <laughs> day two. Look at these newbies. <laughs> well, that's the scary part when you go on these um, uh, resort dives, though. They they put you in a pool and you're feeling real confident stuff and you know it's only eight feet and you're yeah. underwater and you're like wow I can't believe I'm breathing underwater this, this is, is great. great and then you think they might you know take you to the next step where that maybe they take you out in the ocean a little bit off the shore where like, you would normally do the snorkeling yeah let's let's yeah. let's take you twenty feet out or whatever mm -hmm. or thirty feet out okay oh you no. don't have time for that oh, no. man oh no you jump on a boat. You you uh you ride for a good hour. You don't even see land anymore because away from land for oh, yeah, an hour straight at full speed. Yeah, because they're finding the reef. And mm -hmm. next thing you know, you know the next day you're right. You go from the pool to jumping in this massive ocean. Yeah, where you're uh, literally only uh, a couple hundred yards from the shelf where it drops down like a mile. Oh, you could look down and see that oh, darkness. Oh yeah, the scary darkness oh, that yeah. the monsters come out of. Oh yeah, you could not get me to do that. Call me a pussy. Go ahead, pussy. pussy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just well, I'm you're afraid right. of the monsters just, in the water. They just monsters. They just, they take a big step from the pool to the uh, to the ocean. So we're going out there, and on the way out, like you, like you said, it's close to an hour. You know they're they're you know they're, they're going over everything. I love how responsible they are too. The hour that you're driving out is called the booze cruise. <laughs> <laughs> not not with the oh we got we got get wow. all tanked up and then put the tanks on stories. and get in the water. What was that guy's name? The captain who was like banging the chick on the way back from the booze cruise. Oh, Wait, she was like on her knees in front of the the captain's console. Yeah, 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 she, yeah. She was blowing Getting the guy. A blow job on the way. Uh, and, and there was a way back. Oh my god, that is one of the best stories. That was Turks and Caicos too when we went down there for Sam Adams. Just nothing but drinking and sex. Well, it's it, yeah, they, and, and they say whatever happens on the booze cruise stays on the booze cruise. They come and up with just, that one. They have all these like drinking games on the beach, and mm -hmm. everyone gets just completely gone. Most of the people have to be held back on the boat. They're so fucked up, puking. And uh, on the way back, I remember that one guy 
who was driving the boat was driving extra slow because he was getting head. Yeah. And remember what was going on behind him? Like mm. nasty, like storm clouds. All right. Yeah, and, yeah. The, and, the ocean was getting a little nasty. And it wasn't just you and I and the people we were with. Everyone was, was pretty much like, uh, dude, could you hurry up a little bit? These clouds are getting a lot darker and a lot yeah. closer. But, he didn't care. But he's slowing down because he's getting action all the way back to the resort. Yeah. So anyway, we're going out there. And uh, they're giving instructions and making sure your equipment's okay and what to do if this happens. You know, you really the hand gotta, signals. Oh yeah, you gotta you gotta listen, right? And there's this French couple, because uh, Turks and Caicos, it's like half French, half English, and half I don't know Brazilian. I mean, stupid French. The place rocks actually, as far as club med. And uh, this French couple, they're just not listening. And it was just pissing me of off. Of course, I do not need to listen. They're not listening. They think they're they're, they're better than everyone Suck else. Suck it. And everyone's, like, trying to pay attention. They're speaking in French, so uh, other people aren't even hearing. They're just being a major distraction to everybody. Mm -hmm. So I take notice. And I'm like, I, I already hate those two, you know? So you had a problem with them before you even went in the water? Oh, yeah. That's, that's I'm starting the, to think that's, it was Opie's uh, fault. No, that's the key to the story. These, I, I, I mean, you know, these two people were assholes, okay? Mm -hmm. So then it's time to jump in. I jump right in because I've, I, I've done a few dives at this point, so I'm not as scared because, you know, after you go from the pool to the ocean, eh, you, you take your time going in. You're like, Ugh. But I jumped right in. I'm like, I want to get right right into the water, and I go down to 70 feet or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And then they tell you when you're down there, kind of just hang out and check things out and wait for everyone else to finally get down there and, and get situated, and then we'll take you on a little dive around the area, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm at the bottom. And I'm just hanging out, checking it out. It's like being in a huge aquarium. It's it's awesome it, when you you know relax. And I'm watching these people slowly but surely descending from above. You know, nicely. The people that were listening right. are descending around me. And now, hey, oh look, I got a fellow scuba buddy right next to me. Hey, how are you? Scuba you kind of wave at each other because you're all happy. You're in this yeah. whacked out atmosphere, and and they're checking things out. And next thing I know, I look up, and there's the French couple flailing, out of control, coming down way too fast. You're French supposed... bread in their hands. <laughs> right. <laughs> They're on a bicycle with a beret on. This is a true story. Like, out of control. You're supposed to, you know, descend uh, slowly, obviously, because yeah. you got to adjust and blah, blah, blah. I could explain why. But but they're coming down way too fast. And I'm looking up. I'm like, holy S, this guy's going to land on yeah. me. I'm like, no way, right? Sure enough, he just crashes into me with his flippers. The flipper hits me in the face. His body. I'm like, I'm like messed up. I'm like, that's it. So I push the guy. I just push him. In. How do you push that's underwater? The, that's the best part of this thing because it sounds like you know I'm such a tough guy. But you know, try fighting underwater and see how ridiculous you look. So, really get a good example of that Newton's third law underwater. Oh, without a doubt. So I, I push him. And it's all slow motion fi fighting is what it comes down to. So I push him like this, and he like backs up like two, three feet. Cause wow, there's a lot of power when you're underwater. Yeah. So then he, he, I could see the look on his face. He is just livid, and he comes after me. And, I surrender. Right. It, it takes him a while to come back toward me, and I see him coming. But you know, it's everything's very slow underwater. Pull the knife out of your. Leg sheath. <laughs> yeah. So he got him. So he comes back at me and pushes me back. I'm like, that's it. Now we got problems. So I punch him in the face. You swung. Oh yeah. Oh, it took forever to get there, but I I said, Yo, don't what? move. This punch is coming. Oh yeah. So I punched him in the face and pushed him again, and then we just started fighting and wrestling, and that's when I try to pull his air hose out. So now attempted murder. I've You're trying to kill this guy. No, I'm not trying to kill the guy because we're only 60, 70 feet down. Pull the air hose. He's going to panic. He's going to go up, and then I'm going to be able to enjoy my dive. I think there's a problem there, though. 60 feet. No, you could get up. That's why they take you down only 60, 70 feet. Yeah, you could go you right to, up. You have to be down there a long time to uh, not be able to ascend really fast. I and, got la bins. And if I'm wrong, don't call me because we don't need to, to, you know, the details of diving today. Mm -hmm. But so then, uh, yeah, he comes back out at me, and we're we're kind of wrestling and rolling over and stuff, <laughs> fighting underwater. It's a true story, man. I, I I can't make this crap up. Only you. And so then uh, the guide comes down, sees there's a problem, and I I on, I think to this day the guy just thought we were both kind of just having problems. It's having our, sex? <laughs> yeah, really. It, that it, it was we were just having problems, and you know it's our first dive, and we're a little out of control, and it kind of separates us, and we go on the dive, and then the monster the, rain. The rest <laughs> of the, the rest of the dive, I'm elbowing them and and pushing them and stuff, and 
And that was that, more or less. Little brawl. Little brawl in the water. water. Frenchy. Did you make up when you came yeah. over the water? No, then, see, he didn't speak English, so we kind of just glared at each other uh, above water. I, it, fighting underwater, see, with me, like, you know, after the fight's done, I'm fine. You know, I got my aggression out. I didn't really need to take it above water. I just did it. But, with, you know, I just glared at him all the way back to the to the resort, you know. Let's the take look. this into the oxygen, pal. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Take it above water. We're going to take it above water, so... Was he staying at the same place you were? Yeah, I saw him for the rest of the week. The guy was just a just an ass. He was just an ass. Was People up? wondering if you pulled off the Matrix pose underwater. You could have done that. I think it was before the Matrix movies, but <laughs> you know what? It was very similar. That that whole you could do oh. some cool stuff underwater. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And so. the skipper's getting blown. There's a groupie for everything in this. Place. Yeah, the oh, skipper know. on the boat driving back from the booze cruise getting a blowjob. This guy is ready to get engulfed in a storm. Yes, Opie ben. gave us the tour. Me, Steve, and Club Soda Kenny gave us the tour of where Opie lived in Buffalo and where the radio station oh, was. I, I, yeah, but it was where it was Spuds Buckley was thought up. No, it was, <laughs> but it was the best uh, tour because I showed him the the radio station, <laughs> which was a haunted house on Franklin Street. Oh, I saw things there. It might have been because of lack of sleep and my drinking and drugs and all everything else, and the <laughs> and the girls that were that would come up after uh, the bars closed, and I would mm. bang them on tape for the morning guy. On tape? Yo, oh, yeah. And the morning guy would listen? Oh, yeah. I was out of my mind back then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was That's the Bear fun. Man, who, who's uh, back in Allentown. He, the Bear Man. He's like uh, the king of Allentown radio, yes. Wow. But for a while, he Pretty was... Pretty impressive. But for a while, he was the big morning guy in uh, Buffalo. And Does that's where the I... whistle from Billy Joel's song? Boo! Oh, yeah, they do. Clank! He's Clank. actually... He's a great... He really is a great guy. And that's where I did some characters, you know, for his morning show, trying to cut my teeth in the business. Yeah, and uh, Bear Man was married with a couple kids. He was just a, a a bear of a guy. Duh, he was like six four, six five. I don't at least four hundred pounds. Just massive, right? And uh, I was just a young little stud, uh, banging the Buffalo Bettys and crinkle, crinkle. And, you know, the drinks made the Buffalo Bettys look like a little better. Mm -hmm. Look like fives instead of three and a halfs. Usually works. And uh, I, I, I had a regular girl that would come down after the bars closed, and she would take a cab to the radio station because she had no money, and she would do all, all sorts of things. And I'd have like the board up from the AM station, um, you know, do my show for me. I would like I would tape breaks, like. Here's Van Halen on the Fox, the home of rock and roll in Buffalo. Home of rock and roll. You never hear that one. I'll be back after another 20 minutes of music. Here's Led Zeppelin. So I would tape all that, and the AM guy would put it all together, play the songs, and play my breaks. And I would go in the production room with this hua and, uh, and, and, and put it all on tape and then play it back for the morning guy. This was my end. This actually helped me, you know, get a little higher in this stupid radio world. Ah. Because I was trying to get this guy to notice me. I was just stupid overnight guy. Like, who cares? You know, morning guys don't acknowledge the overnight guy when you're in this radio thing. Sure. So I'm like, hmm, how can I get his attention, you know? And, and he, he saw that I was, like, just, you know, just out of control with the women and stuff. So I started, you know, taping it for him, and then I would play it. You know, for him when he was preparing for his radio show, and that's uh, that's ah. that helped me get in a little better. Helped you along. Oh yeah, and then he started getting into work really early because he wanted to hear the latest sex <laughs> sex capade that I had on tape for him. Ah, yeah. So, anyway, so I was in Buffalo and I started dating this girl, and um, and uh, she was really really hot, but she was a psychopath. Mm -hmm. And of course, all us guys, we just love. You know, going after the personality in a woman. Crazy women. Well, uh, there was a, a bunch of people, that uh, women that I could have, uh, you know, dated that had nice personalities, but, you know, they, they were... Finger kind of gives the personality. Yeah, they were awful looking, but this girl was like, <laughs> literally could have been a Playboy model, but she was a psycho bitch. But I'm like, you know, psycho factor, who cares? I Guys could, go for I the psycho I could get over girls. that. I could get over that. Guys really do go for psycho girls. There's, so, some, there's so, something... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I said there's something very sexy about a girl... Who will like look at a picture of a certain uncle and then just shiver and cry into a pillow? <laughs> There's something attractive about that. So yeah. the relationship goes horribly wrong because she had this um, this uh, boyfriend that was a, a coke addict still in the picture, even though she told me that oh, the guy wasn't boy. in the picture. One of those things, right? And and we finally, uh, you know, I finally had just had enough. You know, she keeps telling me she's not seeing the guy, not seeing the guy, and I just knew she was seeing the guy. So so we broke it off, and I started. So is this an Opie scorned? <laughs> yeah, that's why it's not. That's why I didn't really bring it up on, you know. Mm -hmm. But then you reminded me of this. So then uh, I started dating other women, 
And this is where it gets fucked up. She didn't want me at all. But she didn't yeah. want me going out with anybody else. Ah, right. classic lunatic. And, and it's a very small... It's <laughs> I a very, love that gag. It's a very small city, and uh, Allen Street was where all the bars uh, were at the time. And, you know, some word got around that I'm, you know, kind of back on the, the scene banging broads. Playing right? the field. Playing the field. And if I can't and have it, you. No one will. And back then, it wasn't my choice. I really wanted this girl, but I was like, all right, what am I going to do? She doesn't, yeah. she doesn't want me. So then... Uh, she found out, so she proceeds to, while I was down on Long Island interviewing for WBAB, where Anthony and I eventually would meet, ah. uh, I got the job to do nights, but while I was down interviewing and stuff, she proceeded to leave 20 messages on my answer machine of her uh, blowing her her boyfriend, the, the coke addict, oh. blowing, blowing, blowing. It starts actually with a, I, I, I have oh. this tape somewhere, and I used to play it on the radio, and I, I cannot find it, find it, and it bothers me, and I have boxes and boxes of radio stuff eventually I will, i'll find it because that would be the best um but she's it. on tape just moaning and using a vibrator on herself over and over again and she's drunk it sounds like she's on some kind of drugs and stuff and i'm like holy crap i'm hot. thinking i'm thinking this is really hot maybe Was she a teen uh no like 22 oh. or whatever so yeah. it was really hot but then all of a sudden it, it went drastically wrong because i really fell for this girl i really liked her right here in the heart okay so all of a sudden she goes Guess who's here? As she's moaning. Oh, no. Oh, and boy. And all of a sudden she goes, Randy, why don't you say hi? Puts the phone down, and he's in the middle of, you know, doing his thing. And, oh, you know. Oh. Hey, hello. Hey, hello. And you, you had real feelings for this oh, girl. Oh, destroyed me. My heart just oh, freaking no. right to the ground. So, oh, you don't want to hear Boom. Oh, so, uh, it, it, I'm not kidding. It was at least 20 messages over and over again. It was an all-night session. These two were going at it. I, I heard them, you know, uh, screwing, sucking. It was everything. Oh, you listened? I listened to every single one of them. Why? Yeah. Well, what are you going to do? It's there, oh, you know? God. So, then I... um. I'm a radio guy, obviously, so I take the tape into the radio station, and I, I made a greatest hits of the 20, the 20 phone calls, and then proceeded to uh, uh, put it on her mom's answer machine, her Ooh, grandfather, nice, her nice grandfather's payback. answer machine. She lost her, uh, her father, so the grandfather was the father figure, and the grandfather thought, oh, my girl never does anything wrong. So I, I had to straighten him up. I put it on his answer machine, and the mother, who just hated this uh, this coke addict ex boyfriend of hers, wonder why, thinking that she moved on and stuff. Oh no, put it on her machine, and and then I proceeded to play it on um, Valentine's Day every day, uh, every day, every year after that for Good many for many you. years r uh, on the radio, on the radio. Nice. <clears throat> so whatever happened, you never talked to her again. She honestly, she calls me like every like stop still. Every two years, yeah. Still? Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's a psycho broad. Every... You, gotta, you gotta have her on one day. How great oh, is she? Oh, my God. Nah, that's crazy. I, I haven't, honestly, I haven't heard from her in at least, I don't even know, maybe three years now, but. She's great. Actually, the last time she called my mom's house trying to find me, because, you know, in radio, you move around a lot, you get this, you get that. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mom, my stupid mom, freaking gives her the phone number. <laughs> so now, she, now, now I'm just oh, waiting for no. the next phone call from this, uh, this uh, broad. So. Do you still have feelings for her? No, not at all. Honestly, not at all. At the time, without a doubt, when I was playing those things, I was like, oh, um, it, it was the worst. Devastated. Oh, without a doubt, devastated. But can you worst. blame her, though? I mean, look, this guy, Coke out, is obviously banging her all night. She's having fun. He's partying. You're running around with glasses. Wonder if the bear will like this one. Little rose in your hand. Oh, I know. I know. I was, I, I was definitely awful. Oh. And she had Rick James stories and stuff because Rick James was what? from Buffalo. Supposedly, uh, if you I... don't want to go near a girl with a Rick James story. Wow. Yes, yeah, supposedly because she was like a little party girl in Buffalo. And supposedly she, you know, she did some time with Rick James. How'd you get her off? Put your foot in and do jumping jacks. <laughs> <laughs> She was a real trooper, though, man. I mean, she was the type of girl you pull off on the side of the highway and uh, right on the right on the hood of the car, mm. right on the right at the rest stop. This girl loved to just go at it. Cool. She would bring Apparently me to the so. uh, the peep boots, Ooh. and she'd be the only woman there. And, peep shows, uh, yeah. Peep shows. She'd uh, drag. This was a date. She drags me into the into the peep booth, and and she has the cores, puts the cores in, gets the hardcore porn going, and it was the half doors, yeah. and get right on her knees and just go at it, and all the guys. You know, the, all these pervs are in, in the main room, just all, you know, checking, out this, girl, checking out this girl on her knees. She sounds I can believe that didn't wild. last. <laughs> yeah, she sounds a little too wild I for, the young, psycho. for the young, naive Opie from Long Island. I was naive. I mean, she was way ahead of yeah. me. So way ahead of me. Where did you meet your girl? Well, she was kneeling in male slop while giving me a Hummer in a peep show, <laughs> and our eyes locked. She was way ahead of me. That is the truth, man. That thing probably slid up, and people were thinking, well... 
<laughs> How much did he pay for that booth? Yeah. They the knew what chick she was, in there. They knew what she was doing because she walked out. She had two floor tiles stuck to the <laughs> knee part of her pants. <laughs> <laughs> one black, one white <laughs> from the checkerboard floor. <laughs> wow. Look at what this is doing. Uh, oh, that's nice. All of a sudden, See, 20 this windows be, opened there's up. There's so many people that want to say hi, but the, 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 there's like a, a million windows opening up on our phone system. we got to go back to the old phones. It, this is just not working. Every day there's something wrong with the phones. Holy yeah. yeah. You can't you know shut what? those windows? No, I can't. Look, the mouse is just going everywhere. Well, that mouse sure is jumpy. That's a crazy mouse. I'll say it is. See, there's a, a lot of great calls we could go to. Yeah, we could. But instead, we got to probably hear another tired freaking uh, comedy bit. We'll no. return. We'll return. Welcome. It doesn't matter. You don't need a diploma. Opie, look at where you are in life, and you've never had to show that sheepskin that you earned from Geneseo. Well, thanks to Coach. Can thanks I tell to my coach. coach story really fast? Unfortunately, the guy has passed on of, oh, of a massive uh, heart attack, I believe. But he was a poor legend. Coach. He was a legend at Geneseo. A legend. He would sit in the back of the idle hour, this uh, this uh, little uh, gin mill there, the lo where the locals went. And I was having a tough time, you know, getting up and going to class and stuff, and... Uh, you know, one of the older fraternity brothers goes, ha, 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 getting up for class. Let me oh, tell you about Coach. Going to educate you. Let me tell you about Coach. Coach is this guy that sat in the back of the idle hour, and you would go in there, and it was scary because he, he kind of looked like uh, he had his people around them, and he was well protected. It was like kind of a little, Ooh, a little organized to talk, crime. Yeah, it was like going to talk to the, the, the boss, wink, wink, mm -hmm. nudge, nudge, right? And uh, you'd go up to him, and... Uh, you go, hey, coach, you, you know, I'm, uh, I'm looking for a paper, man. I'm looking for a paper. He's like, oh, yeah, what are you taking? And I had some stupid course where I had to uh, uh, write a paper on Russian history because that's really important in the year 2004. Very important for some of the, uh, someone that wants to get into radio. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Most of my classes were a complete waste of time. Mm. So uh, why learn about Russian history and write a paper so you graduate when coach is sitting there and happy hour awaits, you know, across the street? So uh, I swear to you, he goes, well, what, what, what do you want to get on the paper? And, and he had a price list. Like, what do you want to get? I don't re Well, like a grade. So, and and I, I don't remember anymore, but it was like, you know, if you want an A, it'll cost you 200 bucks, let's say. You want a B, it'll cost you 150 You want a wow. C, it'll cost you 100 If you just want to pass, it was like 75 something like that. And I was not doing well in the class, so look, me being very smart, street smart, Anthony. I'm smart. I, uh, I'm like, hmm, if all of a sudden I get an A on Ru a Russian history paper, the, the flags are going to you know, be lifted, and then the teacher's going to know something's going right. on. So I go, just get me a passing grade, C minus, how about? Let's wow, split, let's, C minus. Let's split the difference, 8750 or whatever it was. Not even a B? So, just low self-esteem? Really? I don't know. Well, the communication, he wrote, he wrote, I don't know, at least three or four papers in my career. It, it, I mean, he wrote everyone's papers. And then I learned he didn't even really write the papers anymore. This was before, you know, uh, where you could get your papers on the internet and stuff. Did he franchise it out? This, no, this guy had a, he, he was doing it, I don't know. I might be exaggerating, but at least a decade, maybe longer. So he had a whole file cabinet at his house with all the papers that he knows, you know, that the the, the professors just rotate. Wow. So he would just take one out, fix it up a little, make it a little different, and, and, and give it to you. All typed and everything. You didn't have to do anything. Hand him the money, he gives you the paper, you hand it in. And the, wait a minute, the professors didn't notice that... This was the same they material? They never caught on to this guy. I'm telling you. I know so many people that went to this guy. Man. God bless his soul. You would think they would... Uh, so then... Um, were they exactly the same, or did you have to touch them up a little bit? I didn't even... Re I don't know. You didn't put them in your own handwriting? No, or? no, it was all tight. Oh, tight? You didn't have to do anything. Yeah, I didn't know nothing about college. Oh, what's this? Wow, you got great timing in wow. the other, other room. Wow, we had an organized crime reference about five minutes ago. Wow. Oh, my God, no. Do you have any coach music you can pipe in quickly? <laughs> So uh, this is where it got a little crazy, though. So I'm like, oh, I, I don't have to worry about that class anymore. And I'm getting, you know, shit-faced across town and all of a sudden. And then I, I'm not hearing from Coach. Uh-oh. And it's getting very close. Uh, the paper's due the next day or whatever. I'm trying to remember all the details. But this is, this is a fact. I get a call that Coach had a heart attack. Oh, boy. And he's in the hospital. And 
you know, this representative of coach is like, I don't know if you're going to get your paper in time, man. You know, this was a bad one. This was a bad one. I'm like, I was in a complete panic because I think it was around finals and stuff, and I needed to get like, I don't know, a 2.7 or something to continue with my college career. And, uh, you know, make a long story short, it's not the greatest ending, but basically I, I ended up getting the paper anyway. And, uh, yeah, I got my he C. He got the paper. And I got my uh, my C-. minus. There you go. Mm -hmm. All due to coach. So the Olsen twins, Anthony. I'm oh, sorry. Right. Sorry about that. Yeah, we were talking about uh, college. Seems, uh, well, isn't this hot teen news? Um, I don't think so. You really can't come up with good lies as a kindergartner and a first or <laughs> Second grade or whatever my brother was. I cooks. I think I got you hook. I think I got you beat though. I had the same story. Me and my two brothers. I was trying to bring an outside source into the <laughs> situation. I think I got you beat situation. though. Yeah. Um, me and my brothers, sixth grade, fifth grade, fourth grade, I believe. Yeah. Did the same thing. We called it playing Vietnam in the woods. Yeah, yeah, sure. We had all the plastic soldiers, and we set up little wars and stuff. And it wasn't wasn't good enough that it was the green men against the gray men with the tanks and stuff. Yeah, that was cool for a while. Like, all right, we're playing war, man. You know, me against you. And you any good Vietnam scenario needs some napalm. Yeah, you set up the you know the the bunkers and all this. Mm -hmm. but after a while, it gets a little boring. Like, eh, let's uh, introduce fire into our war games. Right, fire. So uh, just like you, you know, we start with a little fire, you know, and then we we make little fire like bombs and throw it at the other guys' soldiers and stuff, and it was all very fun cool. Games. But then you know, a little fire gets uh, boring, and you gotta you gotta up the ante. So now we're a like more fire. Now we're just piling leaves up around our war area. And now we're just setting the whole thing on fire. And just like you said, you know, uh, your little feet. Oh, they stomp, stomp, and get the fire Ooh, out. Gotta Woo. put that out. You're like, okay, we we survived that little you know brush of fire. Your little pee of flyers, right? Exactly. Trying to put little that pee. out. So then we would uh, make a little bigger fire. Woo, woo, woo. And now there's three of us all. Put it out. Getting it out just in oh, time. Oh, look, a little fire squeezing out over there. You better get that. I ran and got that one. <laughs> so it got to the point like now there's a fire going. Now it's a little windy, I guess. Mm -hmm. The wind blows the fire into another pile of leaves, which blows it into a tree. Next thing you know, we have a raging fire yep. in the backyard. I mean, raging. You you know where I live in in Centerport. There. Yep. All the woods. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Making that hor the the horrifying popping, crackling fire noise when you're a kid, and you look around and you're the only people there. You're like, and you know you're responsible for it, and it's completely out of control. Completely out of control. But there's uh, me and my brothers. Trying our best, man. Now, at this point, we're melting our sneakers. Yeah. We got, like, soot all over our faces. I mean, it is out of control. And, you know, I, I was brought up... Was the soot on your faces so you'd have an alibi later? But you could oh, ask the neighbors I, who did it, and they'd just say, a couple of black guys I saw in the woods. <laughs> no? I was brought up with strict parents, and we knew there was going to be hell to pay, like, yeah. no one's business. So we're like, we got to try to get this fire out. We're trying everything. The whole freaking woods is going up on fire. The trees, everything. And at the top of the hill behind me is another house. Uh-oh. That house, the side of it, wasn't officially on fire, but very, very close. Very close. Hot, okay? a little sooty. Of course, uh, the fire department, the Centerport Fire Department comes and, and puts out the fire, but it took a, it, it did take a while. Yeah. And now, like... You see the water on the trees dripping down, and half the woods are burnt up. And now they Good job. now they line me and my two brothers up, and we got just little white t-shirts and our little jeans on, and our melted sneakers, and a, weighing a hundred pounds between all of us. Oh his. yeah, yeah, yeah. The soot on our face, and and they just line us up. The cops are there, and our our parents, and we're like, oh my god. And I'm like, think fast, think fast. I gotta get my brothers out of this, man. Right? So they're like, uh, do you guys know what happened uh, back there? It's so uh -oh. obvious we did it. And I'm like, uh. You know, uh, officer, I, I did see some oily rags while I was uh, playing in the woods with my brother. You came up with the spontaneous combustion alibi? Hey, man, we had fire prevention in, in school like that week. And they said that oily rags can be very dangerous wow. around the house and the garage. Sure, they bought that one. So I said, yeah, I, I remember when we were running around the woods, I saw some oily rags. <laughs> oily rags. They didn't buy it, and we were like, we were punished. The whole summer couldn't like use our woods, which was just devastating. It was for burnt it. down anyway. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but then you know, my my parents were sick f's, man, because we weren't allowed to leave our driveway for the whole summer. Okay, that and, was your punishment. And, and I mean, our backyard was a huge playground. We had our tree forts and everything, you know. 
And uh, my cousins and stuff would come over, and they would be allowed to run around the woods, and we would just sit in the you know the driveway You'd have to watch them. and watch them have a, a, a grand old time up there. But I blamed it on the oily rags yeah. in the woods. So, <laughs> see, this is what kids do, Jim. They don't play Monster Rain. Yeah, Monster Rain. I think Monster Rain is more fun than that awful fire in the woods. Notice it. At least fire. no one got hurt. Notice that <laughs> Aunt and I's story had. Nothing to do with sucking cock. But it would have soon. It would have soon. A couple boys frolicking in the woods. Yeah. Believe me, you weren't far off. Setting fire. I'm going to tell unless you zip. Yeah. Believe me, one sideward glance during a group tinkle and it would have all been downhill from there. Hey, let's say hi to Rob. Hey, Rob. Uh, what's up, Rob? Hey guys. Yeah, well. Anyway. How much advance notice did you have that anyone was coming over? A couple hours or a day? Oh, no, we talked about it the day before, but he even then bitches about all the trash at the end of it. He's like, oh, you guys leave this place a mess. There's trash. <laughs> yeah, know. after the party. I suppose we're supposed to get up and clean and swipe as we have it. You... Well, I discovered I have a rat oh. somewhere. You have a rat in your house? I thought it was a, a mouse, oh, but. City living, great. But Jimmy Norton goes, ah, ah, that's so funny. Everyone thinks it's a mouse. A mouse, when no. they see it, but You're it's, right. it's a rat. Of rat. It's a rat. You know, that's because my brother uh, had his whole family over a few months ago, and they left food everywhere, and I'm not thinking about it. I'm just like, you know, I'll clean it up eventually. It's in the kitchen area, right? Food they must have brought, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, all sorts of, like, <laughs> granola and nut snacks, all crap. And rat it's, food. And it, yeah, pretty much it's rat <laughs> food. They brought up a rat and, food. And it's laying on the uh, the uh, kitchen there, the counters. And, and I, a couple days later, I'm like, yeah, maybe I should clean up. They've been gone for two or three days. I go in there, and there's a, a mouse slash rat. You know, having a field day, really in wow. enjoying Wow, and he's still in there, huh? I guess, but since then, my kitchen's been spotless. Have you found any droppings? No, no, not at all. Droppings in the cabinets? The kitchen's been spotless. <laughs> because <laughs> chocolate chips by your fork. <laughs> yeah. oh, ugh. I'm too paranoid to, uh, you know, have the rat come back. So, yeah. so far, so good. I'd hate to be a rat in that snackless apartment. <laughs> <laughs> the rat right now is probably a skin and bones. It's the only starving rat <laughs> yeah. in New York City. All the other ones are big, fat rats. Opie's rat is emaciated. Laying sickly, trying to eat a napkin somewhere. <laughs> oh, that party really bugged me. Ugh. We had a good time, though. So you've heard that story, right? No. Really oh. fast? Oh. This, this oh. really happened to me, actually. I was uh, I was really good at uh, basketball growing up. Little skinny white kid out on Long Island. I thought going to be one of the homeboys. I thought I was going to be the next like Larry Bird, but I never grew. No, I was really good. I'm, I'm serious. No, I know. And I used to play with all the brothers and stuff, you know, uh, the the Schwiggies, and I and I took on their culture <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. We went to sure basketball camp every summer, you know, and uh, I would hang in their neighborhoods and listen to, you know, to some. Not really rap music. I was doing Earth, it. Wind, and Fire. No, I was doing my Zeppelin <laughs> stuff. But Earth, Wind, and Fire, and Little Brother. But uh, I had this friend Gary, who was a uh, light skinned black, and we would play uh, a lot of pickup games, you know, uh, during the off season. I've told this story a million times, but it, it's the guy's honest truth. It was the first time I ever said the the N word. Okay, oh. so I was feeling comfortable hanging out with uh, the brothers, really comfortable because you know we were at each other's houses. I'm playing hoops with them. We're traveling together, going to basketball camp. You get it, all right? I I'm feeling it, okay? And uh, we're doing we're playing this pickup game, and every time one of the brothers scored, they're like, "Nice shot, nigga, nice shot," you know, and all that crap, right? Uh -huh. So my buddy Gary hits a three pointer, and I turn to him as we're running back down the court, and I go, "Nice shot, nigger." Like, but I said it like, you know, like a brother would, right? I didn't even actually officially say the whole word before I was knocked out cold on the basketball court. Of course you were, you dolt. Who knocked you out? He did. He did. And he was my friend. Yeah, sure. Why didn't he just explain to you that that wouldn't be appropriate? He I don't did. Know. <laughs> he explained <laughs> you know to you. He explained right. it very appropriately. <laughs> but we, yeah, we turn around after he made the shot. You know, and I'm thinking I'm just one of the guys now. I'm not thinking skin color. I'm like, well, man, I've been hanging with you guys for a while. I, I think it's time we take this relationship to the next sure, level. Sure, to the next level. <laughs> a punch in the face. So I turned on and I, I, I started to say, yeah, nice shot. And it, you know, I got it. I probably got the whole word out. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but I mean, I'm, I was literally not. Did you end out. it with an A or an ER? Uh, back then, I think it was, uh, AZ. Oh. No. What well, did that, you that say? That would be that'd a be, bunch of them. Did you say it plural. nicely or did you sound like Nicholson in The Shining? Nice shot. <laughs> Nigger. <laughs> no, it was nice. Nice shot. It was nice. <laughs> Your son is attempting to bring an outside forward into this situation. <laughs> hey, did uh, so did that end your friendship with him? Yeah, that was the day I gave up basketball and I uh, and I bought a skateboard. Yeah, skateboarding <laughs> is safe. <laughs>
<laughs> you dope. What made you think you could do I that? I don't know, man. That is a true story. That's one of the, the classic punch you right in the stories. Face. Oh, hard, dude. I was out. Out. And what, You woke up, and what, were they still playing? They were just kind of, I don't remember, to be honest with you. They were like kind of, uh, maybe the other white guys helped me up or something. I don't know. When I lived in uh, the predominantly black neighborhood of Central Islip, I avoided words like nickels and uh, knickers. Just to be safe. <laughs> Just to be so nothing was overheard erroneously. You can't even be a kook anymore and have a little fun. Did I ever tell you the story how I ate it? I got a good pirate story. How you ate it? You better be a little more clear. Well, I got a good pirate story. The Pirates of the Caribbean comes out, right? Yo-ho, yo-ho. And it was the first day that the DVD is uh, available. Yeah. All right. I'm online, and I'm getting the movie from my niece Aye. for a birthday or something, whatever. I, actually, and I, I watched the movie. I liked it. It's we, definitely... we know it was for you. Go ahead. Continue. No, it really wasn't, but... Continue, your scallywag. <laughs> so I'm online, and I'm, uh, I go up to the counter to pay for this. Arr. It was at Tower Records, and the guy behind the counter, I swear this is a, a true story, is wearing an eye patch. Arr. And I go... Oh, no. Stop I it. I swear to God. <laughs> oh, you I didn't. swear. I go... <laughs> you didn't. Wow, they made you all wear, you know, uh, patches because it's, you know, the, the movie came out today. Oh, my God. This is really cool. You don't. I swear to you. Because it was the day the movie was released. He looks at me and is like, excuse me? And I went, it's cool that you... The and I went, oh, my God. When's oh, no. the baby do? Exactly. <laughs> That's the Brian exactly. Regan Exactly. Walking up to a woman Dude, and asking, hey, when's the... Baby, do. you could feel the tension on the line. Everyone was like, "Oh, my God. oh. I can't believe we just said that." Oh my God! And this guy was oh. just so pissed off. He throws the receipt at me and my credit card back, and I was like, "But I just thought, I, I, you know, I, I'm trying to explain and I can't." Hey, they gave out hook hands. That's nice. <laughs> Great for the movie, right, dude? What? I mean, the coincidence though. It's the day the DVD's Ooh. released, and the guy has a freaking patch on. That is kind of coincidence. And he's behind the uh, you know, cash register. He should have worked it with dude, a parrot on his shoulder. It was one of those things you just feel inside, like, oh my, you know, you oh. just want to be removed you from the situation. You want to be able to punch out of the uh, situation. It you was. Seat. Oh, it was awful, man. It was absolutely awful. All right, so, uh, yeah, sparking a massive response by cops. All right, so basically what's going to happen is Mussolini will attack me. and uh, Oh, my, my God. God. I'm not, <laughs> I don't want to see this. Wow. I'm not going to give you the numbers as far as what I'm going to do. Uh -huh. Let's just say he's going to lose. Okay. Okay. Are we aware of hard surfaces that could crack heads open over here? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. <coughs> I used to yeah. love being the toughest guy in the studio. We don't even rate anymore. These guys are like killers. When were There's... you the toughest guy in the say, studio? Yeah. What, what about, I, what about I, Anthony? I fought four people. No, I'm not putting me as tough guy in the studio, but I think Rick could have kicked your ass. We, we Rick could have kicked no, your ass. No, we fought. He would have held you down and used your nose to dock with his mule. <laughs> <laughs> we fought. We had a good fight. <laughs> you and Rick fought? Yeah. We did Fight Club. I, I don't think, honestly, that I think one. he got the best of me in the end, but I, I held my own, and then I, I, I beat up Frenchie really bad. But... Frenchie, yeah, Frenchie. That's yeah, but... the judge's toughest guy in the studio. Oh. And then I uh... and souffle kicked his ass in the kitchen one night, <laughs> and then I, and then I gave, uh, I gave Paul uh, Bond a nice uh, black eye. He surrendered to Jeremy Coleman one day. Oof. <laughs> Norris was the toughest guy. Yeah, Norris was definitely wasn't, like, part the, of the, yeah. show. the was... animal that came into the studio. All right, uh, bulldog. Well, you know what I was saying. Yeah. You see the the people uh, that go through the Easy Pass lane, especially in Jersey, because in New York they have the stupid gates that come down. You got to wait for them to go up. Uh, in Jersey, there's no gates. There's a little light that says Easy Pass, and it's green, or it uh, says a uh, call Easy Pass in red if it didn't register. Yeah. They pull up and stop and wait for that light. I like flying through there at about thirty. You know, and you get people in front of you. They they feel like they have to wait for that light to come on. Like if the, if the green light doesn't come on, there's going to be a, a an OJ chase behind them <laughs> to try to arrest them for for not registering. Uh, no, they just they just mail a ticket to you. They I mail a thing. No, that, that says, that's what happened to me, and it drove me nuts. Well, I, you didn't have Easy Pass. No, I didn't. But I, it's <laughs> so, another. So you probably. <laughs> no, I know it's another thing though. It's like um, you know the thirty five cent toll on the Jersey yeah. uh, the Turnpike Parkway. Uh, Parkway, thank you. I don't know. I'm I'm a Long Island guy. So. Uh, so I threw my change into the basket, and it turned green, and I went. Yeah. That's what I thought, anyway. Uh, I get a, a ticket in the mail for $25.35 because I... they they're, Wait, it was a 35-cent toll. And, and, and a $25 uh, service charge or office fee type of thing. 
for them to take 35 yeah. cents? Yeah. It costs $25. That's Dude, why the uh, government's broke. This happened twice on the way to see my brother and his uh, new baby and yeah. on the way back from seeing my brother and his new baby. So I get in the mail. It has my license plate. It took my picture, and it says, you owe $25.35. For what? Mm. They're claiming that I'm blowing off 35-cent tolls. I'll bet you are. Yeah. Not, no. I've gone out to lunch with you. I bet uh, you are. Oh, dude, relax with that. You want to see my... I'm, I'm bringing in my American Express bill, because I'm not going to take the cheap wrap anymore. I'm buying dinner. Bring in and, your bill. I'm buying dinner and lunch for everybody on this show these days. Really? I'm not, I'm not, and breakfast. Yeah, it's getting ridiculous. Bring in the Amex bill. You want me to? <laughs> we'll take a look. No I'd like problem. to see that. <laughs> I'd like to see that. Girl. No problem. So, um, yeah, so they got me for $25 and, and 35 cents. I'm like, so I call them up. I'm like, I'm not blowing off 35 cent tolls. Yeah, why would you blow off a 35 cent toll? No, you, you think you're going to get away with it? And of course there's going to be some ridiculous fee if you blow it off. Mm -hmm. So then I pay that one. And then another one comes in uh, the mail. And I, I call them up screaming and yelling, like, what are you doing? I paid this. Because yeah. it wasn't even worth it, you know, arguing over, really. So I just paid it. But then I got another one. They're like, no, you blew it off twice in one day. And th then oh, I boy. lost it. Then I lost it. So then you know what they do? They're like, all right, calm down, calm down. We are getting a lot of complaints at this particular toll plaza. I guess it's it, it's not obvious what you have then to do or something. Then you shouldn't have to pay any so, of them. So she goes, calm down, all right. You know, you paid the first one. We'll let you off. The, she's letting me off the hook. We'll let you off the hook on the second one. But know what she says? You still have to pay the 35-cent toll. They know I paid it. No, no, they got me breaking the law. So it was twenty five dollars thirty five cents. So like we'll we'll take off the uh, the office fee charge or whatever, but you still have to pay the toll. I'm like, you're kidding me. Why don't you take the thirty five cents out from the other one that I just paid you? Yeah, the other one that I wasn't so supposed ready? to pay. I had to make a check out for thirty five cents. <laughs> Great. How stupid is that? You know, it costs them more to cash that thirty five cents. Yeah. Check than. 35 cents I'm like you got the computer there just just you know wipe it out i don't know how you survive without easy pass i'm not driving anymore. Oh, I don't I live in the the if we get fired we'll pilfer this place they'll come back to nothing yeah. there will be no equipment left in here you don't mean if you mean when hmm. it's yeah. always when anthony i've been telling you that for 10 when years. we get the boot this place will be stripped <laughs> Let's like go to TV. Like a car that's broken down by Jerome Avenue on the on the uh, Cross Bronx oh. Expressway. Oh, we're gonna leave the studio up on blocks. <laughs> <laughs> Just pil pilfer everything. My dad was one of those guys. He would drop the cars off. What do you mean drop them off? We'd have a family car that we didn't want anymore, so uh, two cars would come into the city from Long Island, and only one would come home. Really? really? Oh yeah, man. He would abandon the car. Oh yeah, I wish uh, one of you my used brothers to were see up. that a lot more around New York than you do now. He so used you're giving it away in a weird way, like yeah, go ahead, but yeah, with all the, the it was uh, what was it? The Cross Bronx ex uh, Expressway Cross Bronx, was was famous for that. You would see yeah. all these uh, cars on the side of the road that were picked clean, like you guys were just saying. I, I am listening today. I kind of remember driving it in from Long Island years ago as a kid. The closer you got to the city, the more of these abandoned cars you'd see on the side of the road. People from Long Island would uh, bring their cars into the city and then uh, leave them somewhere and then uh, report it stolen. Wow. That was a big thing that was going yeah. on for a long time. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then I my dad, know. and this is a true story, and uh, I don't know, I'll, I'll have to get one of my brothers on the air to help me out with the story because I was doing radio somewhere, but uh, when my dad was getting up there in years, instead of driving to the city to drop off the old family car, yeah. He would drop it off um, like a mile from the house. Do you remember like uh, the friend, uh, friendlies up on uh, 25A there? Yeah. Near my uh, my parents' house. Mm -hmm. He would dro he dropped one uh, in the in the parking lot of friendlies. But it's not going to get wrecked. No. Like the the reason you take then, it into the city is so it gets stripped. But and then wrecked. he reported stolen, and then my brothers would go, Dad, I I see the you know the whatever car up in uh, in the friendlies parking lot. He's like, Oh, no, that's not our car. I'm like, No, Dad, I see. You know, the oh Geneseo bumper sticker that uh, Greg gave you when he went to college on the, on the, it's our car. No, it's not. It's got to be someone else's car. Oh, man. <laughs> he got lazy with his, <laughs> but with his cops scheming. find it? I don't remember what happened with that one. That's yeah, why I got would have to go somewhere. That's why I have to ask my uh, brothers what happened. I think they started picking it clean. After a while, they realized this car wasn't moving and people started taking parts off it. Would he get the insurance money from it? I don't remember all the details. I know it's a for, nice felony. I, I know for a fact that he ended up, yeah, you know. Leaving one in the friendly's parking lot. 
Now with the VIN numbers and stuff, man, you can't do that stuff. I mean, yeah, that, I mean, this goes way back. Back then, they would just dump it to the junkyard. But now I'm trying to. Oh, yeah, I'm wondering why they uh, they don't do that anymore. Hmm. Why don't you see a bunch of broken down uh, cars? Jalopies the anymore? Jalopies. Hey, Squid, what's up? Stripped. Hey, what's up, shit dicks? Hi, Squid. Hey, Squid. I think we're gonna uh, have to play that song one more time before we get out of here for the <laughs> hey, weekend. Man. If I, I can check. find it, I play it right now. So. uh... Uh, yeah, well, you know, we weren't working for two years, right? And I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna spend winter in New York. I mean, no, duh. It's cold. So I was just traveling everywhere. This is like the first winter I think we're gonna have to deal with in three seasons, right? If you figure it out. Yeah. So, I mean, I was going down to, uh, uh, Florida, Arizona, California, anywhere warm. Warm places. Dallas, I went a, f a couple times. And, uh, every once in a while I'd come back to New York. And, uh, you know, just check out the New York apartment, make sure it's okay and stuff. And, you know, maybe there was like a party to go to or, or a comedy show, whatever. So I would, mm -hmm. I would pop into New York City every once in a while. And I would, uh, because I wasn't there, I kept the heat completely off. Yeah. I mean, completely off, which you know where the story's going on. Uh oh. Completely off. And, uh, so I come back to New York and it was pretty much like yesterday, like 15, 17 degrees out, right? So I, uh, I'm getting ready to, I forgot where I was going, but I was getting ready and I, I, I turn up all the heat when I first got there. It's going to take a while. And I'm like, you know, while the heat's, you know, cranking up, I'll, I'll take a, a, a hot shower, you know? So I'm uh, taking a really hot shower and all of a sudden the water just turns ice cold. I mean, ice cold. The hot water is done. And I'm like, what the F? So I get out of the shower, you know, throw a towel on, whatever. And wow. I'm, I'm, I'm by myself. <laughs> okay, you should make that clear. I actually did throw some clothes on. Uh, no, I didn't throw some clothes on at that point. So I, I walk out of the bathroom, and I'm like, what is going on? What happened to the hot water? And at this point, you know my apartment, you know where my bathroom is, and then there's, like, the living room, and then there's the kitchen, kind of mm -hmm. all one long one thing. One line, kind of. yes. All right, so uh, in the in the distance is the kitchen, and I see a river of water coming from the kitchen. Not a little, dude. Not a little. Like a river. I'm like, holy S. Pipe burst, obviously. So I yeah. quickly throw some clothes on. I, I have a landlord that can't be bothered who changes his numbers. I can't I can't even get a hold of my landlord if I wanted to. Notorious Manhattan landlords. Oh, yeah. They are the worst. Oh, yeah. You you know, the, all they want is the, the, you know, the first rent deposit and make yeah. sure you, you, you give them rent money. Give them their money and, and that's I, it. And it gets to, I mean, I, I had his number originally. But it gets to the point everyone bothers him. He just changes his number. He could he could care less. There you go. He's like leasing the apartment. He has some weird deal. He's just like the, the leasing agent. Like he doesn't Typical. Uh, he doesn't officially own the building, but he takes care of everything for the owner who's in Florida and just gives him money. It's it's a weird situation. So I have just a raging river coming from the kitchen kitchen going across uh you know my living room toward my big tv all my oh, it was coming in from the uh, i thought maybe it was going out the back door or something oh i wish no yeah. no it was it was coming right oh, from the kitchen geez. through the living room and all the way down the stairs right thank god no furniture could have been ruined <laughs> your lack of furniture right your, I understand. you lost a cup and two kernels of popcorn <laughs> <laughs> so i just see a pretzel bowl floating and that's it over the flood of 03, it did $11 worth of damage in my home. <laughs> so it's really, really bad. I mean, really bad. And I don't know how to turn off the water in my uh, in my apartment building. And I don't know, uh, I don't have a number for the landlord. So I'm calling the super who finally got a hold of a friend of the landlord who's going to be there in 20 minutes because he's dealing with another. 20 minutes, a lot of water can yeah, pour in. because he's dealing with another piper somewhere else. Because I guess, the, you know, pipes are bursting all over Manhattan this, this uh, particular week. Uh, so I panic. I'm like, 20, min 20 minutes, and I don't know where the how to shut off the water. You've seen my creepy basement. I mean, there's yeah. no lights down there, and, and it's all just junk from other tenants that lived there for the last, who knows, 50 years. That stuff never, they left there. Yeah, that never cleared out their stuff. So even if you knew where to go, you have to climb over stuff. I, you know, no clue. I had no yeah. clue where it was. So I just panic. I'm like, 911, man. You know, my, oh, geez. 911, my, my, my apartment is literally flooding mm. out, okay? I mean, the water is just, like a river pouring down the stairs and then to that, that corner of my living room, okay, near my TV. And I'm watching the water rise, especially downstairs in the basement, up near the uh, outlets. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. So I'm like, oh, maybe I, you know, I might be, I might get electrocuted here. So I, I didn't know what to do, so I called 911. And and then I, I, I did quickly throw clothes on for this one. So uh make a long story short, the... uh 
the uh, the police show up, and they pound down the door just like the fire department from the last That's story. That's what they do. So they come charging in, like two or three of them. They're, they're, they're assessing the situation, pipe burst, water. At this point, I'm downstairs in the basement uh, looking up. It's like my computer room slash you know guest room, and I'm watching like the ceiling is now getting ready to collapse. Oh, it's the now- water's coming down from the floor and then hanging in the ceiling? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's getting really Ooh. bad. And while I'm, while I'm doing that with the cops all around me, and this is what reminded me of the story, all of a sudden one of them looks at me and goes, Holy S, you're Opie from Opie and Anthony, aren't you? I heard you guys are going back on the radio in Connecticut. Is that true? And I'm like, dude, I will, I will talk about radio. I'll sign whatever you want. I'll take pictures, but take care of the situation. Help me turn off the fucking water, you know? And did they're you like, have a, did you, did you, where was it? Downstairs? Yeah, in the creepy basement. It was in the creepy basement. Yeah, one of the, uh, one of the landlord's, uh, you know, buddies finally figured that part out. But then they're like, yeah, yeah, no problem. But so what is the deal? Whatever happened with you and Anthony? And, and what, what's Anthony do? He wants to know all about you, all about me, the show, when we're coming back. I'm like, and I start cursing at the guy. I'm like, dude, just turn off the effing water and I'll talk about all this stuff. And the water's literally, you know, up to our ankles at this point. And then at that moment, like right on cue, the ceiling collapses. And then the water is now just pouring from the ceiling. Into your basement. Into my basement, missing my computer by literally six inches. Like it's a waterfall of water right in front of my computer screen. Shouldn't have turned the heat off, my friend. Obviously. Yeah. And then it turns out, because, you know, the landlord could care less, it was behind like the dishwasher, I guess. Yeah. And the, the pipe was exposed right to the brick. With no insulation, you know, it's it's outside brick pipe. Yeah, that's it. But uh, another incident where you know, someone is barging into the apartment. Emergency services. And this time, they could care less about the situation. They they just want to know what was going on with you and I. At least you didn't have a man in there. No, I didn't have. A, relax on that. Just I don't know, the J thing is. That I understand. That didn't help the Jay thing? Not at all. No. Damn it. This is another instance where you needed a real man to come help. <laughs> 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 Helpless Opie standing on a chair. Help! Yeah. There's right. a mouse in the house. All right. Uh, third story. I have a Polish maid <laughs> that I bang on regularly. Yeah, there it you go. It comes with the fee. No? Please a- anyone be help me? having sex with me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Opie has a thing for men in uniform. People are really <laughs> hammering you. Yeah, Somebody sent this in. Uh, Nick from Long Island. Opie, you got lucky. This is about the first story. Imagine if you invited Steve C. over. It would have been like a scene at a backdraft. <laughs> 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 well, there you uh, have it. A couple of little stories to start the show today, Anthony. But yeah. Yeah. You remind me of a story. I can't tell you which brother. You know, you know I have a lot of brothers. Yeah. My brother punched a guy so hard in the face because he was too loud on his cell phone Good. To, talking about uh, the colored people. <laughs> really? The guy's using the N-word and stuff, and he's sitting next to my brother. And my brother's like, look, man, I really don't like that type of language, and, and you're really loud, and I really would appreciate it if you would just, you know, you know, s- shut up, basically, right? Well, I and agree the guy, with your brother the guy, at the beginning of that story. <laughs> yeah, the, the guy's like... The guy's like, you know, ah, whatever, dude, you know, blah, 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 and it continues. And, and he's just using the N-word and the, you know, and my brother, he, he's wound tight too, you know. Wow. He's like, I told you to, I don't like that word and, and you're too loud and people are trying to sleep. My you young up. son's in the car. I don't like that kind of language. That kind of language. <laughs> so my brother, like, times it perfect that his stop is coming, right? He just freaking wails and punched the guy, he says, as hard as he's ever punched the guy. Wow. Square in the face and then just steps off the train and gets Good. away with it. Exactly yeah, what he deserved. Yeah. They, and, and then they open it up on the airplane. It's just going to be people, because you hear it at the gate when they still have the, you're able to use the phone. How, how did you, how'd you hook up? Uh, you know, we met in New York uh, years ago through a friend. Uh, she does, you know, she's been involved in improv comedy for a long time. She's got a theater in New York. and Yeah. Just kind of met through friends. Wow. I want, why isn't that as publicized as like Brad and Jennifer? Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> I had no clue. Who has a better agent? Because ne- neither of us makes $20 million a movie. Yeah. yeah. They're not following you around wondering when you're going to have a kid. <laughs> <laughs> following you on vacation. None no, of that's that. my mom's job. Yeah. Do you, have you ever had the paparazzi in your face? 
Very, very little. I mean, only when I call them. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, Please you know. snap off some. <laughs> we, um, I'm proud to say Anthony and I had them follow us around for a while, and it's a very strange experience. Yeah, right. I remember you guys went through a tough time there. When, <laughs> right. yeah. The scourge. What does everyone know about us? Know. Come on, what are you going to do? I mean, I, you know, I, I live Dude. I live in America. Dude, we, yeah. uh, we had, well, I could talk for myself, because Anthony was living in an apartment, so it was a little different for him, but I was in... I was renting in the top half of a house on Long Island, and the photographers camped outside my house for a week oh. with lawn chairs and these huge telescopic lenses. They were jumping out of the bushes when I was coming back from the grocery store. It, it's crazy, right? It was yeah. insane. One day, it's a true story, I just want to leave my house. I couldn't figure out how to do it because they had all the angles covered. <laughs> so they, they they even weren't they weren't sure if there was a um uh uh, uh an, an exit at the back of the house maybe stairs that you know went outside, so but they they had the angles just in case that I left from the back. Yeah. So what I had to do, and this is a true story, I I, I learned this from TV. I, I tied a bunch of sheets together from and I, TV, and I actually shimmied down my no way. from the second <laughs> yes. floor. <laughs> I had my brother take my car and park it in a parking lot because they saw the car in the driveway. So he just casually walked to my house, jumped in my car, and left. And I, I shimmied down the, the sheets. They were left hanging in the wind and jumped over my neighbor's fence and, and got my car and left for the day. And those those idiots stayed there all day waiting. It would have been easier to get Steve McQueen in tunnel life. Oh, I know. One, one day, I just watched them watch me all day long. I thought it was the most fascinating thing. I was just peeking through the blinds, and I saw them looking at their watches and, and getting on their cell phone, giving updates to the papers or whoever they were working for. And then they would get, like, deli orders, orders and, you know, yeah, you want coffee? You could even read their lips. Like, you want coffee? Yeah. You want a sandwich? Okay. Because well, they needed right. that shot of the scourge of society. Yeah. And they never... I I mean, I'm proud to say they never got it because it was a game I started playing with them. But, but you know, you know what's so nuts too is like I know, like you, you, you read the newspapers or the magazines, and you're like, uh, you see these actors, and you're like, ah, oh, this guy's a douche or whatever. And then you know, let, this past summer I worked with Jennifer Lopez on this movie, and and these guys they went crazy. Like, I mean, she couldn't go ten. Oh, speaking of pets, I mentioned it yesterday. I guess this would be a good time to talk about the uh, the mouse in my apartment. Ah. I uh, I caught the mouse, Anthony. I caught the mouse. Did you kill him? Well, here's the deal. Um, as you know, I, I've had a mouse living in my apartment. Uh -huh. I, I only noticed this a couple months ago, but I couldn't find the sucker. A I, mouse in an apartment with no food in it. What is that about? Well, <laughs> um, I, I, I decided to starve the mouse out because I couldn't, I couldn't get him. So I started really keeping the kitchen nice and clean and, <laughs> yeah. and not leaving things out. I discovered the mouse because my brother and his family stayed in uh, in Manhattan with me for a few days, you know, and uh, they left all their food out on the on the counter in the uh -oh. kitchen, like granola type things and like trail mix and mouse food, pretty much mouse food. And one day after the show, I walk into my kitchen. There's a mouse just just having a field day with Ooh. all the food. So since then, I've been trying to keep the kitchen nice and clean so the mouse doesn't eat. Well, over the weekend, I, I discovered my bread was the only thing that was out. Yeah, had uh, a hole. In the back, completely through both uh, both bags, because you know they uh, double wrap the bags pretty much, and then a piece of bread just completely demolished. I'm like, oh my god, this mouse is getting really desperate, okay? And it's it's been showing itself a lot lately because it really needs food. So I'm at my apartment on Monday with my brother, and I'm sitting down eating a little uh, little lunch and just talking to my brother. And I, I I turn to my left and I look down, and the mouse is just looking up at me, <laughs> staring at me, and then kind of climbing up some pillows that I had on the floor. Kind of Ugh. climbing up toward me because it's desperate for food at this point. So he's coming to you looking like, please feed me? I, I, honestly, that's what I think was going on. So then, uh, so then I kind of like went to kind of, you know, grab him. Well, yeah, brave me. I, whatever. I, 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 I try to trap him and he ran back into the kitchen under what the, do you use? under the refrigerator. No, it gets better. So <laughs> then my brother leaves and I'm on the computer, you know, and, uh, my computer's next to one of my TVs, and I, I, I'm, I'm always checking out the news while I'm online. And I look up at the TV, and there's the mouse, like, on the shelf with the TV, just kind of looking at me. I'm like, what? This is a psychotic mouse, man. It's scoping you out. So I'm like, you know, it's time to get rid of the mouse. So I spent, like, a half hour to 40 minutes, like, kind of trapping it. Yeah. You know, I, I was able to keep it on that shelf and keep it in the back of the shelf because it was scared and stuff. How and do you trap them, though? What do you, like, what are you using? Uh, nothing at this point. I just knew if I just made a movement toward him, he was going to go to the back of the shelf. So he's kind of in the shelf area where all the, you know, the the uh, the cable boxes and everything. Oh, okay. So I'm kind of keeping him there, trying to figure out how I'm going to trap him, get a towel or a garbage pail. I don't know. 
And then the mouse comes out, and it's kind of a cute, lo- a cute mouse. Gray nice, and stuff. Nice are sure. Didn't look uh, too disease-ridden or dirty. So I'm starting to think I'm a pretty lonely guy these days. <laughs> I'm thinking... A mouse know, and a Java log? <laughs> you know, I'm thinking that I could maybe keep this mouse as a pet. Uh-huh. I'm, put, put a string on the tail, maybe? Yeah, I'm, I'm, th- I'm thinking, you know, maybe at this point the mouse is so hungry I could get a piece of cheese or a piece of bread or some right. nuts or something. In retrospect, lighting the match yeah. was a bad idea. <laughs> and I'm thinking, you know what, maybe I should just, uh, you know, keep this mouse and train it and just let it run around my apartment as my pet. Yeah, unless I you swear to God, this is going, train it. This is go- yeah, exactly. So, so this is going through my head, and then I'm like, you know, you lonely freak. You're, what are you, stupid? So uh, all of a sudden the mouse just... Uh, you know, darts for freedom and jumps off the shelf, which is about four feet high, and uh, and just leaps about three feet. Ooh. Takes off, and then it's running around the basement area of my apartment, and then runs under a a, um, a doorway into a closet. Oh, nice. So then I fun. finally, you know, make the long story short. I mean, it took a while, but I finally got a towel on it and had it in the towel. And I'm like, I can't kill the damn thing. I'm a wimp when it comes to like animals and crap. So. So, well, well can oh, I ask you unless you're a dog that's eating uh, my prime rib dinner. What? How did you get the mouse out of the closet? Did you, did you comment on its open shirt and little small hat? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So then uh, I, got the, I got the mouse in the, in the towel, and I'm, and I'm thinking, you know, I can't kill it, but it has to leave my apartment. Right. So I dump it outside. And it was literally, what, Monday, 11, 12 degrees, whatever it was. Very cold. And I drop it on the ground, you know, probably sentencing it to death. But I think, hey, look, if you, hey, dude, if you can figure this out, good luck to you. But you might actually come back. That's what my brother was saying. He goes, these, these, uh, uh, uh you know, these mice, they, they know how to get back. They kind of do sometimes. They know where they are. They get they, they, a good sense of smell. Find that apartment again and just uh, run back in, so... And my brother, who's uh, passed down on the couch because I had to pick him up because he uh, had a colonoscopy, just and nothing's going on with him. He just had a checkup, you know. Yeah. And and I didn't even know this when you uh, get one of these colonoscopies these days or colonoscopy, right? Copy. Oh, copy. Uh They knock you out, and you need a family member or somebody to pick you up from the hospital. It's like a law, I guess. So yeah. I, I went and got him and brought him back to my place, and he's out cold, but he wakes up just in, just enough to go. Do you think that's the only mouse in your apartment? If you think so, you're nuts, and then just falls back to sleep. That's Out true cold. too. A lot of times, more than one mouse. Well, it's been yeah. a couple of days. I haven't seen any any signs of any other uh, mouses. No, no droppings. No, uh, a little bit on the counter. But uh, before oh, I got man. the got this one out of there, so. mouse crap. That's what you can see. How about the mouse pee? That's yeah. just everywhere. Ah, uh, eek. Oof. So kill them all. So that's the end of that little. Uh, just had him in the soap towel opera. and wrapped it against the sink. Throw the towel and mouse away. Kind of missed the little fella, though. Anthony. Do you? Yeah, he's been he's been showing himself a lot in the last week or two, and I kind of miss him. Little at first, pet. At first, I was scared, Esless. I mean, I'm I, those you, little beady eyes. Well, you see any little like uh, critter in your apartment or your house, it freaks you out a little bit. I don't care if the the mouse is tiny, you know, it, it freaks you out. It just surprises you when they jump out. Yeah, when you just walk into your uh, kitchen to get a glass of water or, or what have you, and you see it on the counter sitting there, you get freaked out at first. I had one run right over my foot once, Ugh. and yeah, it just, I let out a bitch scream. Just a bitch scream. Whoa! Awful. Felt completely emasculated. They scare you. They kind of jump out. You yeah. don't know what it is. My brother was telling um, some stories. I mean, uh, before he started doing well with his career, he lived on the east side, way uptown, in a really crappy apartment. There were so many rats in his apartment that rats that that they made it a sport. Like they were just killing rats with like frying pans and stuff. No joke. I mean, they would just go just go off. Yeah, you know, Ugh. and blood everywhere. Cause I mean, they huh. just animals. I mean, they were a bunch of rugby players. Yeah, and they almost got excited. It was almost like a sport. All of a sudden, the call would come out, rat, and they would all get into position, get their weapons, and just uh, go hunting in their own apartment. There are a lot of rodents in this city, man. Anthony, a very busy day on the phone yes. is uh, Ezra calling from uh, Boston. We know a little bit about Boston, don't we, Anthony? Of course. From the improper Bostonian. Ezra. So, Ezra. Yes. What's up, Hello. Man? Ezra is calling in because he wants to talk to us about something. I don't know. I don't know what it was. Something about pranks in Boston or something like that? 
Yeah, I'm working on a story on pranks in Boston, and I want to talk to you guys a little bit about your uh, your April Fool's prank involving Mayor Menino and how that unfolded. Oh, well, okay. I don't know what you're talking about. All right. <laughs> Well, uh, we decided just do it during the show because we're very busy with the CBS crew today after the show, so we figured this was better than nothing. All right, cool. So, yeah. so the story's about that particular uh, prank or pranks in general? Uh, pranks in general in Boston, what kind you know, involving a lot of them involving the colleges. But uh, what kind of other pranks are are there? Um, Harvard Lampoon has pulled some good ones. Yeah. Um, like kidnapping John Stewart and things like that, but. <laughs> Kidnapping John Stewart? What about the year they uh, they put the uh, car on top of that uh, that dome there? Oh yeah, MIT is big on putting uh, putting stuff on top of their dome. Yeah, but one year it was uh, a car. One year it was a huge. Uh, uh, what was it like that that thing you put on uh, stupid people that uh, a dunce cap? Like a dunce cap? <laughs> they put a dunce cap? Up yeah, on top of the dome. Oh, one MIT year. is just known for their sense of humor. Those control. guys are a scream. Do you want to yeah, try? they put a cow from the Hilltop Steakhouse up there, but. That's uh, that's about as far as they've gone with. I guess when you're that. not getting laid, you know yeah. you got plenty of time to do do plenty of other stuff. Yeah, be you just time to assemble a top car on the roof of the dome. Yeah, Boston yeah. College just laughs at MIT like, Haha, we're getting laid every night while they're doing silly stuff. Yeah. M meanwhile, who's going to be making all the money when yeah. they get out? You know, I'll MIT. tell you, I'll tell you about a prank that involves my brother's one of my brother's best friends. He was going to, I think, MIT. And the Charles River froze over. This actually made People Magazine, and it was uh, my my brother's one of his best friends growing up. And they took his whole dorm room and uh, put it out in the middle of the Charles River. I heard about that one when it when it iced over. I mean, everything: his bed, his desk, his uh, just everything he had in his room. Jackasses! Yeah. Jesus. And that made uh, People Magazine one, uh, one year back in the uh, mid '80s, I guess, or something <laughs> like that. So, what's his name? Uh, David Cook, I believe. Cook. Yes. Hmm. That's a good one. Well, you want to know about the, uh, the the mayor thing, huh? I want to know about Menino and specifically the pies. I'm curious about that whole aspect oh, of the Are you story. serious? One other thing that uh, is of interest, you know, we had the uh, news crews following us everywhere, and it was one of the most surreal moments. I'm at my apartment in uh, Wellesley, Watching the news because now we're you know we're dopey DJs like wow look at us on TV you know uh, and uh, it literally it was probably the first time we really got real TV exposure yeah so it was kind of cool even though you knew you're in deep trouble and all of a sudden I'm I'm watching the eleven o'clock news and I'm like wow that house looks really familiar <laughs> and I forgot the reporter's name is the guy that used to have the the thick uh, mustache mm. I think he uh, ended up shaving it and it was a big deal up there by the way. <laughs> and uh slow news day. And the reporters uh doing this report from someone's uh front yard and I'm like that house looks really Oh my god, they're right outside. <laughs> We're here at the home of Greg Opie Hughes. Yeah, like... <laughs> you could see him peering out that window right there. Yeah, yeah. You couldn't tell by the pies on the front lawn. <laughs> right. But uh, it was so surreal, you're not really thinking, you're like, Oh my god, what and then I'm looking out the window, and there's the guy doing his live report. And you well, know, they, Newsday, I guess. Yeah, that. and they have yeah. footage, you know, the famous footage of them knocking on the door earlier. And, and, no uh, comment. And my girlfriend at the time opened the door in a bathrobe, like, ah, no comments, closing the door, you know. They you have should have that. thrown a disket at his head. <laughs> <laughs> How do you not miss anything? Oh, with you, it's easy. Yeah, it really is. Even I, uh, I'm in on the Blind game. Flying out of your mouth. I told you the time I thought I was going to die in uh, Nassau, right? The Bahamas? Bahamas? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We uh, went to this restaurant, and then we were going back to the hotel. We left the resort, which is just stupid. Yeah. Absolutely Never stupid. Never leave the compound. When, you, when you're in the Bahamas in that area. Dumb. And we get a cab. And I think I told the story on the air. And uh, they're so laid back and slow down there that we jump in this cab, and all of a sudden, I I'm thinking to myself, this isn't the way back to the hotel. What? What is Aww. Oh. And then you start thinking, oh, my God. Was this a legal cab? Was, Mister, right. this isn't the way home. Ah, uh, dude, barely speaks English. Got the you know the dreads. The Jamaican music is cranking, and then like the president of uh, the Bahamas is having some kind of press conference. He always is. Every time I go down there oh, in okay. the cab, they're listening to some president give an address. Yeah, and uh, all of a sudden, I mean, the roads start getting darker and darker, uh -oh. and it's kind of industrial. Now, do you mean? Uh, what do you mean darker? <laughs> I mean a few things. There's not many street lights out, Anthony. And, and what was the driver smoking a, a, a big blunt? 
He was w- going, it's all good, man. <laughs> no, he was a, he was kind of a weird dude, you know. And then uh, I'll get to that part. So then uh, we're in a, like an industrial section. We pull into a parking lot. And all of a sudden, the guy just gets out. Oh, great. Oh, my God. Is he getting one of his accomplices to rob us? And- Come out there, rob you. Yeah, and all of a sudden, uh, we're just sitting there like, what are you going to do? It's not like I could get out and run for it, because I don't know where the hell I am. You know are, and you're in a bad neighborhood. And then I'm kind of taking a peek, and he's just, ha, 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 yeah, I'm on. He's having a conversation with his buddy. Oh, my God. And then God. they light up a spleef, and they're smoking, and and I'm just sitting there patiently waiting. You know, what am I going to do? What are you going to do, complain? <laughs> and then I realize I'm probably going to be okay, that he just needed to socialize with this guy. And maybe, yeah, but maybe make a drug a deal. Ride. Oh, I know. I'm watching the meter just kind of tick, tick, just slightly. Nothing nothing too drastic. What a you know? of balls. It probably cost me an extra five, ten dollars No big deal, you know, but I'm watching it tick because there's nothing else to watch. And then 15, 20 minutes go by, and the guy comes back into the, the cab and... Drives us back to the resort. You didn't ask him, like, hey. No. Who, who was that? Then I was asking people. What was that about? I was asking people, like, back at the resort, and, and they're like, that's how it is down here. People, it's not like New York where everyone's in a hurry. You know, they go about their business. Oh, yeah, they're working, sort of, but, you know, he he knew he was passing his buddy, uh, you know, between the restaurant and the resort, and he's like, oh, good opportunity to stop by and socialize a little bit and have a little pot. Unbelievable. Speaking of things we have to talk An about, eight ball, the guy's calling doing eight ball of coke. Well, the old days that certainly did work. You Man, would shit your brains out. Did that? Was that the best laxative ever? Oh, a nice coke dump. After Ugh. that, you're you're grinding your teeth and dumping like hey, like, man. like a nut. I gotta take a drive in New York. You want you want to take a trip with me? Head is spinning around. Yeah. Uh, let's just talk about stuff that. Uh, Means nothing for the next six hours. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Shut up. If you didn't have the blow, I wouldn't be listening to you right now. Will you shut the fuck up and uh, just give me a hit? <laughs> saddest thing is running into people that are still doing it. Yeah. You want to smack them in the head. Oh, it's making a comeback with the kids, though. Oh, good. Making a little bit of a comeback. How the kids like the retro stuff. But the guy that had the Coke, man, he had the most interesting talk at the party. Oh, yeah. Actually, he was the most boring guy, but... Little round vial with brown vial with the spoon on on the lid. Nice. All right. Speaking of things we got to talk about, Anthony, 